done this computer yet because it's going kind of right hey guys i think we are recording a huge welcome to week week six week six, six. oh my god six. you guys have stuck it out with us for probably nearly 10 hours when actually we look at <laughs> the amount of time. It's be six hours but i think it's more like nearly 12 yeah. uh, not gonna lie <laughs> which is just amazing. Um, and tonight we are going to finish with an absolute roller coaster, steam like steam mm -hmm. for you, whatever you want to call it. You know, get your pen and paper ready because we are going to be talking about the one thing that everybody wants to know how we do. And if I just talk about between myself, Laura and Laura, I know that I can, I can talk about it. So I've just done annual mentor, which means I sponsored 14 people in the last year and managed to help them all get certified. Laura, I believe, is one away from annual mentor. Oh, which means <laughs> like this 14 people in the last year and helped them all get certified. And Laura, I think, need two? Uh, two. Yeah, I'm two. two away. So that means she's sponsored so far 12. She's going to do her 14 by the time it's up, which means you are talking to people that recruit a minimum of two people every single month without fail. So if we are going, if that you're going to get notes from anybody, if you are going to take what we do, we know how to recruit. So we are going to we're going to teach you what we do. There is no magic formula, but write it down. Everything we tell you to do, write it down, put it into practice, and I promise you will recruit. Okay, I promise. I'm actually putting that out there as a promise. I just want to add something onto that though, and I think this is. Oh, do you know what? I, I will add it on because it might get covered, and then if I don't, if it doesn't, I'll say it at the end. Say the end. Okay. So Write gonna, it down though, because otherwise you might forget. Yeah, no, I know. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna hand straight over to our lovely Laura Bynes, and she is gonna kick you off tonight. So get your pen ready. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Right. Literally, I'm. I'm so buzzing about tonight. I'm so excited about it. Exactly. I get really excited anyway talking about sponsoring because before Sensi, before being a mummy. I spent my career in recruitment, which is very different, but also obviously has lots of similarities. Um, and I never really saw until recently how easily that they, they kind of transfer across. Um, and so I do get quite excited when I talk about it because it's something that I feel really, really passionate about. Before we start talking about the whys and the hows and the whens and how we do it, et cetera, I think the biggest thing, we all spoke about this, is having the mindset around sponsoring you need to have the right mindset around sponsoring we know anyway within this business when it comes to anything you need to be in the right mindset you need to have a positive mindset that you can do what it is that you're setting yourself out to, to do if with anything if you say to yourself oh I'm not sure if I can do it then you never will do it you have to have the right mindset before it comes to doing anything whether it's sharing a product sharing the opportunity whatever it is you need to have that correct mindset you need to if you want something and if what you want to do is to grow your team, you need to believe that you can do it and you need to stop, you need to stop focusing on it, on it like it is this really super scary thing that you feel happy to share the products and you feel happy to approach people if they want to buy wax and warmers, but all of a sudden, yes, whether you think you can or think you can't, you're right. So true. So true. Um, and I think that People feel really comfortable with sharing our product, but as soon as it comes to the word sponsoring, people go, oh, I can't sponsor. I've, I've heard that so many times, I can't sponsor. And I'll say, well, why? Oh, I just can't. Like, either the answers tend to be either they feel uncomfortable asking somebody to join, or they don't know how to ask somebody to join, or they're not sure what they should say when it comes to somebody joining. And I always just say, you've got to get that to the back of your mind and just Focus your mindset on the fact that you can get people to join your team and you want to get people to join your team. And I think the biggest flip in your mindset needs to be realising what having people joining your team, not what necessarily it's going to do for you. I mean, obviously, we know it's going to do great things for you, but you need to focus more on what people joining your team is going to do for them. And I think the moment you flip your mind to that, that's when it becomes easy because you don't think, oh God, I feel uncomfortable asking somebody to join. You think, oh my God, I want to tell everyone to join because this is amazing and it's going to do amazing things for them and they're going to love it and they're going to be super happy and they're going to be on this huge roller coaster of excitement like we are always on. The moment you flip your mind to that, it becomes easy because you think, why wouldn't I want to talk to somebody about this? Why wouldn't I want to tell my best friends or my the 
mums at school or my family or whoever it happens to be, why wouldn't I want to tell them? Why would I hold this, this journey back from them? And I think as soon as I flipped my mind to that, because don't get me wrong, in the beginning, I was very much the same. I was like, oh God, I don't know how to ask someone to join my team and what should I say and how do I approach it? As soon as I realized, actually, I'm offering them this amazing opportunity that I am loving every single second of. And I feel super selfish if I don't offer that out to somebody. Like, that's, that's mean of me to not go, look, here you go. There's this amazing opportunity for 85 pound or less, which Laura will cover. Um, there's this amazing opportunity that can literally change your life. Why would I keep that all to myself? And as soon as you flip your mindset to think it's about them as opposed to you, that tends to be a bit of a light bulb moment where you go, okay, this isn't about me at all. This is totally about them. And when you do that and you have people join your team, trust me, if you don't have anyone on your team yet and you're wondering why does everyone go on about growing your team? Yes, obviously it's going to benefit you. Yes, obviously it's going to take you up in the conversation plan. But actually, the thing that far outweighs all of that for me is the enjoyment I have from having people on my team. When people message me and they're like, oh my God, I'm really certified. It's yeah. the best feeling in the world. When they message you and they're like, oh my God, I've just done this or I've just done that. It makes you feel so excited for them so much more excited than you are when somebody messages you with an order it 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 just feels amazing and I think as soon as you start to focus on that and switch your mindset to that side of it as opposed to I need to sponsor because I need to move up in the conversation plan I need to sponsor because I want more money I need to sponsor because I want to get the incentive but don't get me wrong of course you're going to be somewhere in your mind thinking those things but that needs to be the back thought of your mind and the front thought thought of your mind is what actually sponsoring can do for them so to get yourself into the, the mindset of sponsoring first of all you you need to focus on it and you need to believe that you can because if you if you say that you can't and you feel icky about it then it's going to come across like that when you're speaking to people so you, you've got to stop overthinking it. I think that's the classic thing is people overthink sponsoring. They're quite happy to say to their friend, oh my God, have you seen the angel wing warmers? I think you'd absolutely love it. But they're not so okay with saying to their friend, oh my God, you buy so much Sensi, why don't you just join? Like, where is there any different? Why are you happy to ask your friend to spend 42 pounds on a warmer, but you're not happy to say to your friend, spend 50 pounds on a host join kit? There's no difference. And so you need to stop overthinking that question around sponsoring and start to realize that actually sharing the opportunity is exactly the same as sharing the product that literally is there is no difference so when you start to get your mindset around sponsoring um i think the biggest thing that i found is to make sure that you're not you're not selling you're not selling the opportunity to someone. Like we said, actually, previously, when we we're talking about PRB, you are sharing the opportunity with somebody. And that all comes in, again, to the whole attraction marketing thing. If you are wanting to grow your team and you want to start sponsoring and you just start putting up some pictures of the join kit, or you start putting up a post saying, join my team, or you put up a post, like a really generic flyer about joining Sensi, that's when, again, that whole sponsoring is being about you and you haven't made it about anybody. And you're not gonna attract people like that because if I was to read it or if you were to read it, if you were to read somebody, I don't know, from Arbonne or Tropic or whoever it is with a flyer saying, join my team, you're, probably, you're not gonna stop and look at it. You're literally just gonna scroll on by. It's not attractive. There's absolutely no reason why you're going to think, oh, yeah, I want to join their team because you're, they're not telling you anything. They're not telling you a story. They're not, they're not kind of, I don't want to say coaxing you in, but they're not attracting you to their business. They're not telling you what their business is doing for them. And I think that's one of the main things. And it's like when we say about driving your PR, PRV, you've, you've got to, like I've just said, show what it's going to do for them as opposed to what it's going to do for you. So when it comes to putting your join posts up, I think the, the biggest thing um, I have found, and I think Lisa and Laura will probably agree when it comes to any join posts that they've ever done, I don't do join posts. 
I've never put up a join post on my page ever. Never. I don't really like them. I don't find them interesting. I wouldn't stop and scroll. I, I mean, I wouldn't stop. So I'll go scrolling quite. So I'm sorry, hon. Right. So you mean with the words join my team on? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. join yeah. my team and just a picture of the kit. Yes, never. Or just a generic join my team. Whenever I have done join posts, I, I, I never think in my head, oh, I'm doing a join post. I literally will put a post up as if I am telling a story about my sense of journey. So it will always have something to do with something that is happening within my sense of journey. And I make it about how Sensi has benefited my life or how Sensi has given me this opportunity or how Sensi has given me these wonderful friends, et cetera, et cetera. I'm gonna give you an example um, that actually I got the team, somebody joined my team off the back of this post. And now when I wrote this, this 100% wasn't a join post. This was just kind of from the heart of something that happened at the time. And I wrote it down and I had a message two days later saying, I've just seen that post and it really stood out to me. I've been thinking about joining your team. And it literally was like that little light bulb went off and I just thought, this is exactly how we should be sharing this opportunity. So I'm just gonna read it out to you because I think it's quite important. Okay, so this was just after Christmas. It was a picture of a laptop um next to my obsidian so it actually was just like an attraction marketing post because i was putting a picture of the obsidian in there um so yeah that was the picture and then i put on here um yesterday patrick bought me a laptop this is something i've wanted for ages but with all of our house renovations ongoing it's just not been our number one priority but when i opened this yesterday alongside my excitement came total appreciation appreciation for what this incredible business has bought me with such little investment I've reached the very top of the company, working solely from my phone. I have no fancy office, no computer. It's just me and my phone, part-time, whilst being a full-time mummy to my three kiddies. I'm bringing in almost a five-figure salary working from my phone. How insane is that? But do you know what excites me? That this is possible for everyone and anyone. Anyone that loves Sensi can do this. You don't need anything but utter love for the product to succeed in this business, and that's what makes it so special. This isn't a post to boost about what I'm earning and I hope that's not how it reads. I just want everyone to know how special this is and how amazing it is to be part of it. I've got so I put, that, reading and I put that post up and I had somebody join my team after. <laughs> and I'm, thinking, I'm gonna join your team. I wanna go, I wanna go. And the thing is that's totally like in the moment and written yeah. in the moment, not premeditated, exactly. how you're feeling. And like you say, like, why would you not share that? And yeah, like it's just so it's yeah, it's just so perfect. Yeah, and the thing is, with a post like that, as I say, I did somebody join my team off the back of that, and she said, "Have do you really just work off of your phone?" And I was like, "Yeah, up until I got my laptop, I said I've just done everything from my phone." And I just said, "I don't have anything else. There's there's no airs or graces. It's just me." And I said to her as well, like she was in my customer group. I was like, "You see what my life is like. You see that my life is hectic. You see that I've got three kiddies and one is still at home." I said, "And this is why I love what I do." This just fits into my life. And I was being totally truthful to her and speaking to her about that. But actually another reason I had that part of that conversation with her when she approached me is because I know she's a busy mum. I know that that would be the first thing that she'd go, mm, I have got quite a busy life. And this all goes back to what we spoke about last week with customer service and getting to know your customers. Because I knew her as my customer, because I know what her life is and she's just not someone I just sell to and I don't get involved with. I know her and I know that if she ever did consider joining my team, her first worry would be, am I gonna fit it into my life? Yeah. And so when she spoke to me about it, I was like, it works perfectly with me and my kids. Not because she had asked me how I fit it in, I was just telling her because I know her and I wanted to tell, tell my story, I guess. And so I think with that post and any of my posts I've ever put up about joining, my other ones have been like when I've got incentives and stuff like that, they will always be, and I think we spoke about this earlier, it's more, I will be telling a story. Um, and there was a quote, and I can't remember what you said, Laura, about the- Facts tell, stories sell. Yes, exactly that. I went to write it down, I was like, oh, I can't remember what it was. <laughs> I can't remember. But it's so true. It's like at World Tour, um, is it Ken Kendra? Kendra Hall? Yeah. That was her name, wasn't it? And she done that whole, that part that she done about telling your story. And I thought, when it comes to sponsoring, I don't think there is anything more that you need to think about than telling your story. Telling your story that's what it is and that's what people want to hear they don't want to hear you say join my team because join my team is just saying I want to make more money join my team I want to make some more money 
that's all it sounds like whereas and if you're sorry I'm, go on. Go on. I think this is really because I think uh, people might think oh well you know you've got a story to tell when you've reached superstar director or mm. you've you've got there and you've got that but just as an example I was just trying to think it's as relevant as I remember literally when I started and I was waitressing I, working crazy crazy hours working like three jobs I remember writing a post that I'd been waitressing the night before and I got in at one o'clock in the morning and we got up and it was like Saturday or Sunday and I was a, we were able to take the kids out and buy the milkshakes with my sensi money so that's not buying a big fancy house or a dream yeah. car and all that jazz that's buying my kids milkshakes out of my money that I'd earned yeah. with sensi so you can do it from day one it can be you've bought your food shopping it's whatever it means to you at that time in your journey yeah and I think that's what's really important it is showing what sensi is doing for you it's not writing a post saying oh my god I'm earning loads of money it's not writing a post saying I've hit the top of the company or anything like that that just happened to be that particular post but I've got obviously lots of other times when I we took the kids to Legoland I've always wanted to take the kids to Legoland but whenever we've said about taking it Patrick's obviously more sensible than me and he's like no it's too expensive we're not taking them so we've never been and so then last year I was like we're taking the kids to Legoland and I'm paying so you can't say that we're not going and I've done a post <laughs> and it was a picture of the kids outside Legoland literally looking the happiest they've ever looked in their life and I again just done a post just saying this is what Sensi means to me being within Sensi has given me the freedom to be with my kids and to actually be able to do things like this for them and the interaction that you get on posts like that because I think that people just people don't really understand what it's about and I think whenever people think about sponsoring they are just they worry I think people they have that mindset that you're worrying that oh, is this awkward? Oh, I don't know if I want to ask someone to join my team because what would they think? And are they thinking that I just want to make money out of them and things like that? Flip your mindset. You are not doing it for that reason. You are doing it because if you think why you love Sensi, you want, if you're thinking about why you're thinking it's so amazing, if you think about what it has done for you, then share it. Share it with people. That is where you want to be thinking about sponsoring. You don't want to be thinking about anything else. You want to be thinking about, oh, I bloody love Sensi because it's allowed me to pay off my car. Or oh, I bloody love Sensi because actually it means I can be doing the school runs. Whatever it is that you love about Sensi and that it's given you the freedom to do, talk about that. When you are wanting, trying to sponsor people, talk about that. Talk about what it has allowed you to do because that is going to open up so many more conversations. And as we know, this is network marketing. The business we are in is all about networking with people, getting to know people, talking to people. Sharing that opportunity is no different to sharing the product. But when you're sharing the opportunity, you're just telling them simply how it fits within your life. You're telling them what it has done for you. You're telling them why you love it and what it can do for them. Not what it can do for you, what it can do for them. And as soon as they see that and they can see the utter excitement and that you actually genuinely love it like I think that's what people if I talk to people they're like you literally live and breathe it don't you and I'm like yeah I love it like I to the bottom of my heart I love it and that's why I want everyone else to have that opportunity because seeing people join and love it too is the best feeling in the world so if you're nervous about sponsoring focus on that feeling you're going to have when you have that first teamy and they message you and they're like oh my god I've got my first order that's the best feeling in the world. So if you're thinking, oh, I don't know if I want a TV, trust me, think about that moment and that 100% flips it. And then once you have that, you're like, oh my God, I want more of this. And I want more of these people to enjoy this. I want more of these people to be feeling on top of the world. And actually as well, once you, I think once you've got over that first hurdle of that first join conversation, you then, it's a bit like the first time of going live. First time you go live, you're like, I don't want to do it, I don't want to do it, I don't want to do it. And you feel super nervous about it. And then you do it and you're like, oh, it really wasn't that bad. It's exactly the same with having those joint conversations with people. And, equal, and I'm not going to go into this part because I know Lisa's going to, but what I will say as well is don't let somebody saying no make you give up when it comes to sponsoring. And the reason I'm going to say this, I'm not going to go into it, because so Lisa's going to cover this, but I worked in recruitment for 10 years, I think it was. And I, my first few years of working in recruitment, I worked for a headhunting company so we didn't get cv sent to us we didn't get people approaching us about jobs we had to go out and poach people from one retail store and offer them the opportunity at another retail store so i had to cold call which i feel felt really uncomfortable at, but i had to cold call people asking them if they wanted the job opportunity which thing now makes me kind of cringe because i'm like oh I just that's just not me but that's what i had to do and some days i would have 
called a hundred people and every single person would say, no, no, I'm not interested. No, no, I'm not interested. Not interested, not interested. I'd keep calling and I'd keep calling and I'd keep calling. And then number 101 would go, oh yeah, okay, yeah, I'm interested. And that person would then go on to have an interview and then earn me a big fat amount of commission. And now I'm not saying it's the same with Incensi because it's totally different. We're not cold callers, we're not spammy, we're not going down that route. But the, the reason I'm making that point is just because one person says no to you or even if 10 people say no to you, that doesn't mean that you give up. That doesn't mean that you go, oh no, I can't sponsor. Because number 11 might be the person that says yes. And number 11 might be your total rock star. And that might be that person that skyrockets you and them to the top. So don't give up because one person has said no to you. And also a no isn't a no forever. It's just a no right now. And that is such a big thing that you have to remember. Because if I think of so many people on my team that said no to me, and if I had gone, oh, well, they, they don't want the opportunity. Like the amount of people that were like, no, no, I don't want to do it. Lucy, if you're watching now, who Lucy's a total rock star. She's been only been with us for a little while. But I know so many times I was like, you've been amazing at this. You just need to join my team. You would absolutely love it. She was like, no, 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 no. And it became a bit of a joke. Every time she picked up her order, I was like, you know, you just need to join, don't you? She'd be like, oh, no, no, I'm not going to do it. And then one day she went, actually, okay, I think I will. And I just thought if I had stopped on asking after that first time when she said no she'd never now be on my team and she'd never be experiencing the things that she's experiencing now and she's absolutely rocketing and she's loving every second of it and I'm loving every second of it and if I'd given up on that first time when she said no that never would have happened so if somebody does say no to you if you go right okay I'm going to get super brave and I've switched my mindset and I'm now going to um think about doing these joint conversations if then someone says no to you don't let that affect your mindset. Don't make, let that put you in that negative thought. Because if you message someone and say, do you need any wax? And they go, no, I don't need any. You don't go, oh my God, I'm not going to message anyone else if they need any wax. You just go, oh, okay, they don't need any. Move on to the next person and say, see if they need some wax. It doesn't affect your mindset if somebody says no to buying something. So don't let it affect your mindset if someone says no to the opportunity. Because it might just not be the opportunity for them right now. It may be the opportunity for them in six months. It just isn't right now. So don't let that affect your mindset if somebody gives you that no. Because I always say it's a no right now. If you know somebody is going to be wonderful on your team and you know they're going to love it, then it's a no right now. It's not a no forever. So you keep asking that person. Um, I've totally gone off tangent. I, don't, I haven't even looked at my notes. So before I hand over, I'm just going to check if there was anything that I did actually write down that is super important. Because I've literally not looked at them. Um... Da, 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 da. Um, no I think that was literally all of it and the, the only other thing that I was going to say is let the let people see as much as possible why you love it and it's like we said with the attraction marketing when it comes to sales if you are on your social media and you're like oh my god there's not enough hours in the day I'm so busy and I literally like my kids are going out the door without having a proper breakfast because I literally haven't got my ducks in a row and all of that jet like literally if you're being that person on social social media just bear in mind that the people are watching and people that are thinking potentially about joining your team might be like oh she's super stressed and super busy that's probably because since he's taken over her life so I don't think I'm going to do that like what you present on social media is so important and I'm not saying be fake I'm not saying be false at all but just obviously be aware you're about to sneeze Lisa I, <laughs> I was gonna and I just silenced my things I didn't want to do it too loud but you know it goes and then you know <laughs> um but yeah I think that I literally haven't covered my notes at all I'm so sorry so I've probably missed out like a whole heap of things but I just got a bit overexcited um but yeah just my biggest thing is make it personal show your face tell your story show people what it's done for you um and realize that it's about them and that it's not about you. And I just think any time that you do something in your life that's made you go, oh, that's because of Sensi, share it. Because as I said, when you flip your warmer on in the morning, you're quite happy to take a picture of that and share your warmer. But if you've just bought your kids new pairs of trainers or whatever it is with your Sensi money, then share it. Because if you, you'll share the product, share the opportunity, there is absolutely no difference. And if you think about it in your head, I always think it's like to flip the script a little bit. And instead of thinking, I'm going to sell to someone and then I'm going to try to get a party for them and then I'm going to ask them to join. We, we were talking about this earlier. Flip it around. The first conversation you have, 
habit about joining? You're not interested in joining? Okay, great. Would you like a party? No, you don't want a party? Okay, cool. Like, which woman was it you're interested in? No, nobody's going to turn around when you ask them to join and go, well, now you've asked me to join. I don't want to buy sense from you. That's not going to happen. It's just not. But if you never ask, oh, yeah. you're never going to get. And it's as simple as that. You could have somebody that you think is going to be a total rock star. And if you never ask them, they're just going to go and be a rock star for someone else. Hell yes. Oh, yeah. Sorry. I've gone off on a tangent, so I'm going to hand over. <laughs> Shall I go on from there? Because I think that goes up quite nicely on going for the no consistency. Are you happy with that, Laura? Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. yeah cool. Okay. By the way, when Laura was talking and she read out her post, I was supposed to share my screen. In your um, workbook that we get, did you write at the beginning, loads of you were saying to us, I, I don't know how to write posts. I don't know how to write posts. We've given you so many examples. I mean, Laura, your post honestly was like, giving me inspiration oh, running through my head and yeah I was I was feeling very emotional so it's done the trick and it really made me actually think about my own join post and thought mm, you need to up your game girl you need to up your game so we, we know that right okay so I'm going to talk to you a little bit about I'm going to carry on with Laura was starting to sort of touch on consistency and going for the no um how many people, I've already seen, Rachel's just said that she's asked 20 people already this month. So Rachel's just answered my question. How many people have you asked to join since the 1st of March? Put it down. I know for me personally, I'm asking at least a minimum of three a day. Laura, Laura, how many have you asked? No pressure. Oh, oh yeah, definitely a, a couple a day at least. A couple yeah, a day. I literally, I would always make sure I have at least a conversation per day. It should be more though. I'm aware mine should be more, but it will at least be one every day. Okay, we want to turn those low numbers into high numbers. So I'm going to talk about the fact that it is a little bit of a numbers game. I don't like to say it's a numbers game, but it is. There, there's no doubt about it. To recruit or sponsor, whatever you want to call it, a high number of people, you have got to be having a high number of conversa uh, conversations. So this is this takes us right back. And this is where why we chose to do sponsoring in the last week, because literally we're now tying together all the things we've taught you to bring it together for you to go, oh yeah, okay, that now makes sense. Like when we talked about, you need to be having lots of conversations, you need to be building your customer base all of the time. This is the reason why, because every single customer that buys a product from you, whether it's one bar of wax or whether it's 200 quid's worth of wax, they should, you should have had a conversation with them at some point since they've been your customer about whether they want to join your Sensi team, whether they're your best customer, whether they're your worst customer, whether they're your customer that maybe drives you insane because they've got 20,000 different choices of favorite wax. It doesn't matter. Every single person that you have given any form of customer service to, you should be able to tick off on a sheet and go, yep, yeah, I've asked them to join my team at some point without using the words, join my team. At least ask them, have they considered joining, for example? Um, the more people that you ask, the more chance that you're gonna get a yes. My personal numbers is I would say that one person in 10 tends to be, no, actually, I think it's like one person in 30 tends yeah. to be a yes. Now, some of you might be sitting there going, 30? Are you joking? Like, I've asked four people this month. Well, you, that's gonna take you all year to get one team in. So you need to be up in the game with the amount of people that you're talking to. Think about the numbers. Now, as Laura just said, if you're doing it the right way and you're using it via networking, every time someone orders, I actually drop it into conversation now. I say things like, oh, I'm just literally filling out an order form for you. I'm not, I'm writing it down in my book. They don't know that. I'm just filling out an order form for you. And one of the boxes on here is, would you ever consider joining Sensi? I haven't just said, join my team. I've just asked the question, like somebody's just asked me, would I like tomato to ketchup with my burger? Yes, please. No, thank you. And literally, they're going to come back to you with a yes or no answer. And if you did that every single time you took an order from a customer, obviously, you need to make note of it somewhere because there might be some customers that maybe order from you four times a month. And if they're saying four, to, four times now in a month, they might get a little bit, yeah, I've had enough of this now. I've got a customer tonight before we came live. Hold on, my battery's died. And I think I, I messaged her. She did um, this dance on her Facebook and it was like a mum dance. And she was like, my kids have gone back to school. And she did this dance and she videoed it. So I messaged her and my, my message said something along the lines of, oh my God, you just need to join my Sensi team because the amount of interaction, I did say join my team, because we've had this conversation probably six times over where I've said, have you considered joining? You would be amazing. She's a now tech. She's done, she's got like, 
She's very busy. She's got a few jobs. And I said to her, seriously, the interaction that you just got on that post, if you didn't self censor you would be mad. And she's like, you know what, Lise? I am really, really busy right now. But when things slow down, she said, I will seriously think about it for you. And it literally was a really tongue in cheek. Like, I was only joking. Like, of course I wanted to join, but it was very jokey. And it's just as simple as that. You need to make asking people, go for that no. Don't be afraid to go for the no. Make it a regular thing. You need to build sponsoring or asking people to join into your daily actions every single day. I think I said that to Laura, Laura from Lynn, I don't know if she's watching, but we spoke today about recruit, uh, recruiting on the phone. And I said to her, oh, I'm, I'm asking three, at least three people to join my team every day today. And she just went really quiet. And she's like, what are you doing, doing that every day? And I said, yeah, like every, every day I'm finding three people. Now, if you're sitting and thinking, right, I haven't got enough customers for that, then that's where you need to start. Go and get some, find some more customers, build that and then start asking them to join your team. But you've got to go for the no. You've got to be, you know, giving yourself enough no's to get that yes. One or two questions. Would you like to join? Have you considered joining? It's not going to be enough. It's not going to be enough if you really are serious about joining um, and building a team. I remember when I first joined, I started asking people, Laura told me to, she started saying, well, just ask people to join. And I'm like, okay. So I did. Every single person that I come across, I said, do you want to join? My first teamie had bought from me once and I didn't know her from Adam. And she sold with me for a whole year. Didn't know her from Adam. Can I just add something in really quickly to that? Now, I feel like Lisa and I have like learned together. Now, Lisa didn't have a sponsor, i.e. me, and I totally hold my hands up. At the point that I was Lisa sponsoring, joining, I didn't do anything like this with her. I didn't do any trainings. I just said, just ask people, that's what I do. And that was the, as, as far as it went because I was still really early in my journey as well. So you don't have to be have all the knowledge it's just it is a simple and that's the training that Lisa got so honestly the fact that you guys have got this is amazing but it is just about not overthinking it because Lisa and Lauren never had that from me it was just just ask people and that was it and it, it literally was as simple as that every single customer that bought something from me everyone that had a party and their party went over two four five I asked them would you want to join would you want to join I know, I don't know if Faye's watching, if Faye's watching tonight, I think I asked at every party, she had two parties a year for me, every party for three years. So we're talking, and I, and I asked her more, I asked her when we was in Marbella, put, I was putting on an order in Marbella, laying on the bed, and she was reading the order out from my order book, and I said, you should just join, and she was like, no, I'm not interested. But she's a lead consultant now, and probably not far off of going to hit star, and she's got a team. So it just goes to show as Laura said, it's not always going to be yes straight away. So you've got to be going for that no. Now, I know that there are loads of people that say, and I'm going to ask you how many people have said this, how many people have said this big question that says, oh, but they're my best customer and I earn really good money off them. Tell me, yes, if you have got that customer that you are scared to ask to join your team because they spend loads of money with you. And you're like, oh my God, I'm gonna, I can't let, afford to lose them as a customer. Okay, be honest, be honest, be honest. Okay. Okay, so let me give it to you like this. I want you to think about it like this. Customer, we're gonna call her Sally. Sally comes in and she's, I don't know where I just got that name from, by the way. Customer <laughs> Sally comes in and she orders with you 200 pounds worth of Sensi. And you're like, hey, this is why you're my best customer. And I'm gonna give you all the goodies. And I'm not gonna ask you to join because if you join, I'm not gonna have a 200 PRV order and I'm not gonna get active and I'm really worried, okay? From that order, you're gonna get 166 PRV, okay? You gotta to listen to these numbers. And I'm making sure I'm getting these numbers right. You're gonna get paid 25% on the PRV from Sally's order, which is 37 pounds. So you're going to get, uh, if you're certified, you're obviously going to get 20%. So work that out based where you are. But if not, and if you get your 2000, you'll obviously get 30% on that. So it'd be a little bit more. Now, Sally has just bought a really big order with you. So she's probably not going to, she might order some little bits each month, but she might not do a big order like that. Like how, there aren't many of us that have got customers that spend 200 pound a month. And if you have, you definitely should have signed them up by now. Now, let's say you signed Sally up. You put in 500 PRV and you show Sally how to put in 500 PRV. And Sally does that every single month for six months. As a certified consultant, uh, sorry, as a lead consultant, you're going to earn 4% on Sally. That's a 4% bonus. Now, that's £24. Doesn't sound like a lot of money. But when you add that up over six months and Sally hasn't bought from you, 
for that six months, you're going to earn off of Sally £149. So she orders on from you once in six months, 200 quid. Oh, yeah, big customer. 37 quid in your pocket. But if she orders, if she joins you as a team for six months, every single month, and she brings in her 500 PRV, you're going to earn £24 every month for six months. That's £149 just from having one team member. It doesn't sound like a huge amount of money. But if you imagine you recruited 10 of Sally over six months, that's £1,149 over six months. That's a hundred over £100 a month. Can you see where I'm going with this? Okay. Literally, that is a, yeah, it is a mic drop moment. And when we did the maths earlier, Laura was saying about it, she said, oh my God, like, it's such a misconception. And it is the biggest myth conception. And this is why when your customers say to you, oh, I just like doing this to help you out. Your response to that should be, you can help me out more by actually joining. And I can help you. They don't, I think they, they don't understand it. They don't get it. But also, for you guys, you've got to think of it like that. Don't not ask your best customer to join because you're worried that you can't replace that PRV. You can replace that PRV. You can replace 166 PRV. Easy. Easy. That's like two big warmers and a six pack of wax. You can do that. Easy peasy. Just got to put your mind to it. Get the mindset. Get your head down and focus. So... That should hopefully maybe be a little bit of an eye opener. There is that misconception of I can't recruit my best customer. Yes, you can. I want you to all go and ask your best customers to join. I'm going to, I'm going to ask some of mine and I want you guys to go and ask some of yours. Okay. So um, also with your best customers, you can always add up how much they've spent with you, work out how much they could have actually earned in commission and talk about it like cash back. Because you could say, look, you don't actually need to recruit a team. You don't have to put in orders for anybody else. But you actually get enough orders. You spend enough with me in one month to have an active order, which means you're going to get £24 free credit. And you're also going to get cash back in your bank. And that's a really good way to talk to them. So that's your numbers game. That's your consistency. Now, one of the things that popped up quite a lot, I noticed earlier when we asked you about um, what sort of conversation you have with people is about sending people information. And I get asked this all the time. This is probably like the number one question that comes in my inbox is about join packets and giving people information who want to join Sensi. So this is something that I think is a tool for me that makes me money. This is an income producing tool. I have these made up. I've got about six over there and I try and advertise them at least once a week. And I'm going to show you what's in my join packets and then I'm going to come back to talk about my last little bit. So these join packets, I quite often take a little picture of and I put them on my, on my stories with a poll, normally saying, who would like one of these for free? It's completely free. Um, and I put them on my customer group. I put them on my personal Facebook. I put them everywhere, basically. I put them everywhere. And the stickers that say join my team are in the success store. The packets are the same ones that I advertised the other week. They're in everybody's group. Um, the, and I think they're actually out of stock. I think we might have like out of stock to them. So what goes in my join packets? Now, I am going to share with you. Don't worry about writing all this down. I'm going to share with you my Google Drive, which has got blank versions of every single document that's in here that you can then just make your own and personalize if you wish. So I'll give every single person a catalog. Oh my God, this smells amazing. It smells like windowsill breeze and coconut lemongrass mixed together. Um, so one catalogue, got all my details on it. When people want to join, sometimes they literally want to sit with a cup of coffee and flick through a catalogue and they want to read. Some people don't want to be text. Some people don't want to be phoned. Um, some people don't literally want to have messages back and forth. They literally just want something in their hands that they can read. So this is like a really good way to bring entice people in. I use this more as an attraction marketing um, thing on my social media. And I've had quite a lot of joiners off of the back of my join packs. So I've also got in there, this is um, copied off of another leader, 10 reasons why you should join Scentsy. Um, it's just got some pictures of me, pictures from World Tour, and then it's got like 10 reasons why you should join. Um, a picture of the host join kit and how they could join for £25 because it is a personal special, so it has to be done on a one-to-one -one basis, really, really important. A little bit about this needs updating, but a little bit about my why and my journey. Um, I've even talked a little bit about my income in there. 
Um, again, really needs updating. Um, but I've talked a little bit about my income in there because generally people sometimes don't want to ask you like what potentially they could earn with Sensei. Although I did have a guy this week, he did. He just asked me outright, how much do you earn? That was an interesting conversation. <laughs> um, business card will always go in there. Um, and then realistically, it's just a sample pack. Okay, everything in here is a sample pack. Join the journey leaflet that's from Sensi Success Store. My own Sensi sponsoring leaflet that I made. Again, I'll take pictures and show you. And then everything that goes in my sample packs. So stuff about Sensi Club, scavenger hunt, samples, loads of samples. Um, a little bit about what Sensi is. And most importantly, a freebie. This is something I don't give in my join pack, in my sample packs, um, a whole scent circle. But I always do in a join pack because technically they are trying the product. And I find join packs tend to go to people that have never, they're people that have never tried Scentsy before. They're more likely to ask for one of these. So they're a really good tool um, to use for putting it out there, to ask people if they want information. It's an, another route of, being sensitive sick on people. I used to find that people would ask me for information on joining. And I felt so excited that they'd even asked that I was like, oh, blah, 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 like this, as you can imagine. And I was exactly, I literally sensi vomited on people, like with excitement of telling them all about the commission, telling them about um, the compensation plan, about minimum orders. And I must admit, I've scaled that back massively now. Literally, every person I talk to, it's literally there's zero pressure, zero targets. I do all the zeros. Um, we keep it really fun. It's definitely scaled back. But this, the join pack allows me to really not be sensitive sick on anybody. It allows me to really rein it in and make sure I'm just giving them the key information that's all in there. And then I can go to them with that really important question is, have you got any questions? Is there anything that you would like to know about joining Sensi? Because at the end of the day, it's about you. It's not about me. It's not about anybody else. It's about you. Like, what, what could this do for you? And normally in that time when they've had a join pack, I have that conversation, like sort of saying, look, why do you want to do this? Like, I want to know. And some people might think, God, you're going to really put them off by asking them why. Because some people might go, to, especially those that have approached you about joining, it doesn't happen often. Laura, you get loads of people that have approached you. Like people just literally magnet into you and they do, they really do. And, but it's where you're so good at that attraction marketing. And when yeah. those people do, <laughs> when those people do come to you and say, oh, I think I'd really like to join. One of the first questions you want to be finding out is why, why do they want to do it? Like what, you know, I got told, I, I don't, I don't know if she's on here. I won't say her name, but one of my team, I'd never met before. It was actually from a sponsored post that I did on Facebook and told me uh, this was within two days of messaging that she wanted to buy a new carpet for her flat. I rang Laura and I cried. I actually wow. cried on the phone. And she was like, oh my God, are you all right? And I was like, I know, but I've had a real, it was an epiphany because someone was telling me that this is what they wanted to do. This is the improvement they wanted to make on their life. And I was like, I want to make, make that happen. I, I want to literally give her all the tools to make that happen. And then when we, when we messaged and when we talked about, you know, going for her, her active orders, I could say, look, we're that step closer to getting that carpet. And it sounds silly, but that was her why. So it's not silly. It literally, that was her why. And it really, really got me. And, and especially when, when people then open up to you, it takes your relationship on a whole new level. So when, if you can get, break down that barrier of them saying, yeah, do you know what? I think I would like to join. Finding out why they want to join as well. Really, really important. So join packets are a great way to do that and open up a really great conversation. Um, I can't remember what else I was going to talk about. I've talked about it's a numbers game. I think that is, hold on. So in terms of, I've, I didn't really talk about consistency. Last little bit for me. So more than anything, you've heard the word consistency probably from us spoken about every single week. And some of you might be like, I'm so sick of hearing that. It's not a magic formula. But it really is. And this is probably the biggest thing for me is if you don't advertise regularly that you would like to, you know, that, you, that people can join your team, not that you would like a team, that people can join you. What will happen is they will think that you're not, building a team they will then go and find somebody else and that's happened to me it's happened to me before where someone then comes to me and went Lise 
I've joined Sensei. And I was like, uh, not with me. Like, what, what? And she was like, oh, I didn't, I didn't know you were sponsoring at the time. Uh, or I didn't really get it. So you need to make sure that you are putting it out there regularly. Now, I, if you know, you know, if you're someone that's like, I would forget to do it, it just isn't built into my habits, make it a habit. Set yourself an alarm on your phone twice a week to be like, I need to post about a join opportunity. Now, whether that's posting the kit, I don't do it very often, but this week's probably been the first time I've actually posted the kit in a really, really long time. My posts are very similar to Laura and Laura's. Like it's that whole look at look at what we're doing right now how much I'm grateful for what is going on within my life and letting people know that. And that sort of draws people in and having those conversations. But when I'm deciding I need a teammate, I'm going to focus on that. I literally put all my efforts. I make sure that I put it out there every single day for a whole week. I, and that's why like lots of us are doing these sponsoring challenges at the minute where we're giving you ideas to do daily. If you take those and you run with them, it's bringing in consistency. It's making sponsoring become part of your everyday business sponsoring should be as natural to you as selling a wax bar it's simple as that literally putting it out there into the world whether it's a poll whether it's a um story whether it's a join post whether it's a post on your personal page i bet if, if i ask them here how many of you have never put a join post on of any description on your personal facebook not your customer group, not your business page, not your stories on your personal Facebook. And there's a little world at the top where you can go edit post and you can make it public so that every single person, whether you're friends with them or not, in the whole world can search join Sensi and believe it or not, your post will come up. So if you've never done that, make it a priority to go and get a post out there. It doesn't have to be come join my team, exactly like Laura's explained, exactly like the posts are here. Get it on your personal Facebook, but make it consistent. Personal Facebook, maybe every two weeks, put one on there. Customer group, every week. Stories, every week, twice a week, at least. When you're putting it out there that amount of times, hopefully that will start to build intrigue. It will start to build people liking on those posts. If they like that post, inbox them. Send them, thanks so much for like liking my um, sponsor post. I really appreciate it. Have you ever considered joining? It's an opener for a conversation. They've literally liked your post. They've loved your post. They've seen it. Pop them a little message. Just make sure they're not a sense of consultant first. Okay, handing over to you, Law. Okay, cool. Right, I have literally just tried to make some bullet point notes so I can go for each little point and not talk for another hour because I don't want to keep on that. But this is, these are all points that they're all merging to each other and they're all so relevant. And so like literally, oh God, it just sets like a fire in my belly so there's, there's a couple of things just following on from what Lisa said that I didn't want to interrupt because I, I don't I, I'm not being rude when I do that I just get overexcited so first one is I'm gonna throw out some quotes because we all love, now I love a quote right find your why you'll find your how and that's why when Lisa says ask people about finding your why if you think about why you're doing it that's why or why you originally did it that was your drive there's a really good book called start with why by Simon Sinek and it's so incredible. And that's, people will have an emotional attachment to doing it. So like they said, it's about building relationships and finding, and that's why it's so important to find their why. The next thing, uh, when Lisa just said about habits, show me your habits, I'll show you your future. Your whole life is built on your habits. So it's things like, if you said, oh, I don't know, like coming back to what we said the other week, um, I'm not a morning person. That's a load of rubbish. You just make yourself a morning person. You start getting up earlier. And then before you know it, that'll become a habit. So by saying I can't sponsor, absolute tosh. You absolutely can. Make it a habit to start asking people. Make it a habit to start posting on your personal page. It's like anything in life. It's that like, and again, like Laura said at the beginning, it's about making that decision and making that decision to do it. And all the people that have just said, um, you don't post on your personal page. I can bet my bottom dollar it's because you're worried about what other people are going to think, right? Like with anything in this business. If I told you, you could earn £500 a month, £5,000 a month, £10,000 a month, £32,000 a month, fifty grand a month, become a millionaire, would you worry about what other people think? I don't think you'd really care by that point. So you need to have that mindset right at the beginning, because those people don't pay your bills and it's exactly the same with anything. So that is your Facebook, your feed, your decision, your life. 
So that's what you just need to remember. Okay, so I'll come back on to, um, and I just need to add, I didn't always have that confidence with saying that. That has grown over time. I had all, we all had all those same feelings in the beginning. We all started out just like everybody starts as an essential consultant, but you have to just build those habits. And before you know it, not in an arrogant way, but it is true. Those people do not choose, you know, don't get to dictate your life. It's your Facebook feed. So it's your choice what you put on there. It's their choice whether they want to watch it, look at it. I'll find a post in a minute and I'll share it. I remember saying, you know, I've had people saying, oh, there's an intense consultant, so it's them people. But you're not doing it for them. You're doing it for the people. Like they said, that message you and say like, oh, you know, I want to join. You've really inspired me. I want to be able to pay off my debt. You're doing it for those people. So you need to drown out those ones over here and listen to these ones. Okay, right. So I'm going to talk about the host join kit. Um, so many times people will say, oh, have we got any offers on joining Sensi because uh, they don't want to spend £85 on a kit? You have an offer on joining Sensi on every single qualifying order that you put through. Every single one. You might not realise this, but basically, if you were going out into the world and doing an, a physical party, you know, remember those days, um, and the hostess of that party got her host rewards, she could join Sensi for free if she earned £50 free credit, okay? Every single qualifying order that you put through, you have that free credit sitting there. So somebody can join the host join kit for £50. If you want to, if you've built a relationship with that person and you want to offer them the host join kit for £25 and you want to offset some of that credit, there you go. They can join for £25. Like, so that is, it's your business, your decision, but you have the opportunity on every single a qualifying order that you put through to offer the host join kit to somebody okay that's not flipping the whole party and the prv to them and i'm gonna talk about that a little bit in a minute um because that's not necessarily a bad thing to do i'm gonna come on to why in a minute <coughs> however um you have an opportunity to flip the host join kit so many times um and as laura vines actually said earlier she was like you can offer them that but then Nine times out of 10, Laura, well, actually, you said mostly, didn't you? She actually talks them into the 85 pound kit. So it's just, it's a, it's a conversation starter. And then you can build on it from there. Um, if you, I'm not going to go into that too much more now, because we've all got trainings on how to do it. I know I've got one of my, uh, I've got a link I can share from YouTube. I'm sure the girls have as well that we can share after on how to process the host join kit. Basically, the kit goes to the person and then the rest of your order, you close off the rest of the post rewards in the normal way, the half prices, and the rest of your order comes to you in the normal way. So we, we can show you how, how to do the details later, but just know that on every single qualifying party that has got host rewards on there, you have the opportunity to sign someone up for, you know, for whatever you want to. And honestly, now, I, I literally, if I close off a party without joining them, I'm just like, oh, this is just not happening. Like, I literally make it my mission on every single, and I know the girls do too, on every single party to close off, to offer that to somebody. Because it's literally just like, it's just a kit just sitting there. And it's just like, oh my God, I need to offer that to somebody. So utilize the host join kit. Really, really important. You cannot, if you are going to discount that with using, um, can you do this even if, no, because you make them the host ton. That's kind of part of the admin part of putting it through. But yeah, so basically on every party that you, if you put it on the system, you've collected in the orders, you can offer that kit to somebody, but you just add them, make them the host. But that's all kind of like admin bits of it. If you are deciding, if you're going to offer it for £50, that's how much it is, you can advertise that. If you are going to discount that in any way, shape or form, um, using your free credit, which is at your discretion, um, you cannot say join for £25. That is a personal special. So you can say, I have an amazing offer to, you know, join tonight, um, pop me a message for info or who would like information. Um, okay, so next thing. Never, ever, 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 ever cold message anybody about joining Sensei. I cannot tell you how many times a week, mostly on Instagram, if I'm honest, and the girls get too. I will get somebody in my inbox from another network marketing company <laughs> And it actually cracks me up because my, my Instagram could not be more sensey. Like if it tried, they'll message me and go, hi, I really like your feed. You'd be really good at network marketing. Yeah, <laughs> I can get that. I, I'm not in a, you know, like, but it's like if, if 
They don't know me. They haven't built a relationship with me. Clearly, they've not taken any time to have a look through my social media. And in the early days, I'll be honest, I used to get like, oh my God, look at these people. And now I either ignore it and that, like, not in a, you know, we're busy and, you know, that is not an income producing activity going back to that person. I focus on my own business. But if I feel like I want to, I'm not rude. I just go back and I'll go, you know, I'm with Sensei, da 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 da. Um, if I can give you one, like, one tip, this is not how to network. And, and we f- and flip it around and another girls do it too because that's absolutely not how to network. Do not ever cold message somebody and just say, do you want to join? Do you want to join my team? You don't know anything about them. You don't know. Because honestly, people will just run the other way. And I fully understand in the early days when you want to, you know, you want to grow and you want to develop and you want, but it's so important to do this authentically and do it organically. Because if you did happen to get someone to join like that, it, it's never going to go anywhere. They're never going to do anything. They're never going to, it's not real. It's just, it's, yeah, it's just never going to work. So don't let it frustrate you anymore if it does, because I fully get that I used to be that person. But now I almost just kind of smile, breathe and go, give them a bit of, a bit of advice if you want to. Um, it's probably just bad guidance because I've had, again, I don't know. <laughs> I've had bad, I was with another company and I've had bad guidance in the past. And, you know, again, they might not have had great guidance. So I'm just saying that is, that's absolutely not how to network. Okay. Um, yeah, don't call, call. Um, yeah, and, and as well, if you're like cold messaging somebody that you're not friends with, it's going to go into their other's folder anyway. So you, they're probably not going to see it. Um, okay. Exactly. What's that? More than likely. That oh, more than likely. Yeah, yeah, they're not, they're not going to see it. Right. Um, next bit was I've said that bit um why have I written where for oh dream team list um you should all I'm sure all of you are on our um each individual sponsor any match whatsapp group the groups that we set up so one of the first things that we sent out on on that was you know you need to be having a dream team list you need to have a list of people in your um in your site that that you think would be amazing at Sensi, you know, people that are your customers, people that are that you've got relationships with. And what's going to happen as time goes on is people on that list are going to join your team and you're going to tick them off. And then you're going to add to that. And it says you're building relationships with people and it says you're talking. But again, there's a quote from Tony Robbins. This is, I've actually saved it in my notes. As Tony Robbins says, um, where focus goes, energy flows, where attention goes, or where focus goes, energy flows. To get what you really want in life, you need a clear goal that has purpose and meaning behind it. Once this is in place, you can focus your energy on the goal and become obsessive about it. That's the secret of how energy flows, where your attention goes. And I remember seeing a quote once, it, or, or like something on social media that said, some people, or some people might say I'm crazy or, or batshit crazy but I call it passionate well I'm batshit passionate oh, I love that yeah I've seen that one you know what if people think I'm crazy for being this passionate about these I'll take that like totally 100% own that fact because why not like why the hell not like we keep saying you need to think bigger like this is your life and I'm not going to get into like mindset and all that because you know I can talk about that all night but you need to focus your energy on this you get one shot on this planet you're not do you want to look back in 20 years and just think oh what would have happened if I'd like reached out to a few more people about joining or offered the opportunity and and coming back to like to what the girl said at the beginning what you literally have your hands on is solid gold like absolute an absolute real opportunity to get people out of debt to pay off all their credit cards to buy them a new house to or if they don't want it to that level you know so they can take their children on holiday or whatever it is you have an opportunity here to help them to do that so just don't keep it to yourself like why would you okay um da, 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 i think oh no the last couple of bits we were going to cover was about the current incentive and um a couple of like myth busters so i've actually just copied over one so i'll just say i can guarantee because we all hear it all the time um there are too many consultants in my area excuse my area is saturated excuse i know loads of sense consultants doing it already excuse that's just like that's just an absolute truth bomb okay we all hear it all the time there are 1.47 million people in essex alone okay we all live within a 10 minute radius of each other tanya who's an ssd lives in canby island which is close 
Claire, who's an SSD, like uh, Suzanne and um, Emma. Emma, <laughs> I was going to go, I can't remember her name. Um, they are sisters in Scotland, both reach SSD. There are billions upon billions of people in the world. The whole saturated thing is an absolute myth because... Yes, when you start, like that is your, so your friends and family and the people that we all know, we know lots of similar people. Like that's when you first start. But then that person's got a cousin who's got a sister, who's got an auntie, who's got a work colleague that lives in Surrey, that lives in Scotland, that lives in um, France, that lives in, like we are an international business, okay? So saturation doesn't actually exist. So that is 100% like the first myth busting, first of all. So you know um, what um, I was just going to say, what I say, because where I live is a very small town. And obviously there are a lot of us in here, in, in this town. And when someone says to me, oh, but there's so many people in South Woodham, literally, no joke, my answer is, so? Yeah. Like, well, what do you mean, so? Does it matter? Like, why does it matter? That's exactly what I said. Why does it matter? Well, because everyone's selling. And I'm like, do you think everyone that is a centre consultant in this town only sells to people in this town? And do you think yeah. we all just need to know the same people? Like, we're not like a little community where we don't venture out. I'm yeah. like, I sell to some people here, but then I also sell to people here and people here and people here. And they then all network off to different people. I'm like, it's totally irrelevant how many of us there are in this town. Like if I... They've all got their own sense of consultants. Then you sell to people, you all have different paths from old school friends, old work colleagues, your yeah. family or whatever like laura said it leads off into different paths it's literally irrelevant so if someone ever says it's saturated it literally just say so it doesn't matter it depends how hard you want to work i always say it as well when laura brings that up obviously me and tanya both ssds she's my frontline ssd she's my sister-in-law so we've got the same family we've got the same with it we're like she'll she'll kill me for saying this but we i think we're like four years apart in age maybe we're three <laughs> Maybe it's less than that. Maybe it's more than that. I don't know. Maybe I'm quite a bit older than her, but I can't remember. But we have the same group of social friends. We go out in the same group as friends. We all go out together, yet we, we both hit SSD. And I think if, any, if there, anyone was going to struggle doing that, when you've got the same family and the same friends, how has that happened? Because I tell you what, we've worked bloody hard in going out and finding new people. And obviously then Claire... Tumble on Claire. Well, that's her best friend that also lives in Canvey that's also in our social circle. Me and Laura, when we first met, we had something ridiculous, like 200 friends in common. And for the first probably six months of knowing each other, she was like, we're talking about someone. And I go, I know her. And then I'd be talking about someone and she'd go, I know them. They're like my friend's cousin, sister. And we knew so many people that were the same people. But yeah, actually, I don't think it's ever affected us to a point where I've gone... I sell to one of her customers or she sells to one of mine by, by accident or anything. It just, it has never, it's never even crossed. So when somebody says to you, oh, there's too many consultants in my area. I, I mean, Nick Wilson lives in Whitford. Amanda Wing lives in Whitford. Both directors, both directors. And I'm trying to think who else. I'm probably leaving, like, like I could literally, honestly, I could go on. But it's, it, there's definitely no such thing as saturation. That word is just a dirty word. So you guys, <laughs> you guys need to get it out of your heads as well, because I actually, when I hear people say it, I get really angry. It makes me want to go, no, it's not about being saturation. It's about actually that you're not working hard enough if you really, really want it. Because it's the same principle, okay? Do you think if somebody thinks, I'm going to train to be a hairdresser, oh, there's too many hairdressers in the world. I'm going to train to be an accountant. There's too many wouldn't even think about how many oh, do you know what there's a i can't think how, how it's written but there is a picture i've seen you'll probably be able to find it on pinterest and it's in the bread aisle at a supermarket oh, yeah, yeah. yeah and there's all the different breads and they say like there's oh, god knows how many th different brands but that doesn't stop a new brand going oh i'm not i'm not going to do it because there's already fifty five thousand yeah. brands of people that make bread you know what i mean it's irrelevant do you think david beckham or ronaldo thought I'm not going to go be a footballer because there's hundreds and hundreds of footballers. There's people that work, want it badly enough and there's people that are prepared to work for it and that's why they have success. So you have to have exactly the same mindset with your sense of business. Sorry, Which I think that also goes with the Mythbuster one that we were saying earlier of people saying, oh, well, oh, it's, a bit, it's a bit late for me to get into it now. You all got in at the right time. Ugh. And oh. honestly... <laughs> I always think, actually, I don't know if she'll be watching, Laura, but Laura, you're Laura Street. Oh, yeah. I always think, obviously, how could she joined and yeah. just skyrocketed like that because she worked hard, because she wanted it. 
and she worked her butt off to get it. It's absolutely yeah. nothing to do with the fact that she's been doing it five years because she hasn't. It's never she, a right time. No, exactly. It, it's just how hard you want to work for it. And One of the things we just talked about, oh, sorry, Laura, am I, am I cut you off, was about how basically if you put all this into practice, this links hand in hand. Everything we've taught you should teach you how to earn this incentive and it, it, there shouldn't be one person that's watching right now there's 96 right now every single person that's on here should be able to hit level three at the incentive 100 percent. and that all starts with having that right mindset of being able to hit it if you looked at that incentive and went oh my god i can't sponsor three people then you're not going to sponsor three people it's three if people. you look at that and say i can sponsor three people then you 100 can it is it's 100 all in whether or not you believe that you can do it. I remember when the slingshot one for Canada, Laura, you probably remember when it came out, I phoned Laura and I went, oh my God, I'm <laughs> going to go to Canada. This was like day one, the incentive was released. And to be fair, in the back of my mind a little bit, I was thinking, oh God, like that's not just level three, that's like top 50. And like, but why not believe that you're going to do it? Because if you sit there and you go, oh, I can't do it, then you're not really going to try. If you're like, if you're not looking at the incentive tracker till two months down the line, so you have then no idea where you are, that you're, you're never going to do it. You need to, I, when the Disney one came out, I re literally remember sitting in a hairdresser's and going, right, this is exactly what I need to do and when I need to do it by to be able to earn that incentive. You need to break it down and you need to tell yourself and give yourself a time scale. Like we said in week one, set your goal, set your time scales, and then like it becomes achievable. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, Energy flows where your attention goes. Uh, exactly. uh, it's always a quote. It's always a quote. What is the time, girls? I'm thinking like we've, we've been on the okay. Can I just put in the last little bit that I think is really, really important? And I know at least talked about numbers again. This is what I wrote down at the beginning. And I said, if we don't cover it, I'll say it at the end. I think it's really important to get across to everybody. And you all understand that whether it's any of us or anyone that's sponsoring, not every single person that you sponsor is going to work. Mm -hmm. Not every single person that you sponsor it, like you might sponsor somebody and they're all excited and then literally two weeks later they disappear off the face of the planet and you never hear from them again you need to understand that is nothing to do with you because every single person that you sponsor they've got the same opportunity the same coaching the same stuff on in our groups the same stuff on youtube the same. from that point on that's down to them okay so it, motivate all you can ever do as a sponsor or a leader is inspire people motivation has to come from within the person so there's a misconception that, um, you know, I've heard people say before, like, oh, but I've sponsored three people and, like, they just don't do anything. Or I've got a team full of hobbyists. Or we'll find more people that do want it. Because, you know, I'm going to just... Oh, I can't find my, my laptop. I was going to say, right. I'm, on my laptop. I'm on it. <laughs> I had this conversation with somebody last month and they asked how many active frontline I had and how many frontline consultants. And... So I, I'm gonna, I was going to look, but it's something like I had like 32 active frontline, but actually in my frontline was about 80. So there's a majority of them that are not doing, like weren't active or, but, and that's fine because that's their decision. But what I'm saying is you need to understand if you sponsor five people and only two of them ever do anything, it's no reflection on you. And you can't waste your energy trying to restart. Like a, I'm trying to think of an analogy that's not rude to anybody. And I don't mean it in a bad way, but like, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. That say that. That's I, it's not, it, that's, so you can't keep trying to like restart something that's not there. Like I'm trying to think of like- It's absolutely know. no reflection uh, yeah. on you either, um, is it? Like you can't relight a fire that's, had, that's got water poured in it or something, do you know what I mean? Like, so there's only so much you can do. So I think that's to reach a point where like, you stop putting your energy and beating yourself up because you've sponsored three people that didn't do anything. Do you know how many people I've sponsored that didn't do anything, just got the kit and ran? And that, you know, it does happen. So just, I want, I just wanted everybody to realize that it does happen to everybody. And that's why it doesn't matter what level you get to, keep sponsoring and keep bringing in new people. And that's kind of why we say with the whole numbers game, like we don't mean it as in, because it makes it sound like we're just saying, talking about people as numbers, like totally not meaning it like that. But as you say, if you've sponsored two people and, and neither of them are doing something, then you are going to think, oh my God, like I, I can't recruit it but it's no different to say Laura recruiting a hundred people and only 50 of them doing it. Yeah. It, it, it's just it's because her numbers are bigger. It's not so apparent of then those 50 that aren't doing anything. And I, again, I link it back to when I worked in recruitment and I think I'd always aim to get three people going for the same interview. Cause if I just had one person go for that interview each time and they didn't get it, I'd be like, Oh God, I spent all that energy and all that time with that one person. They didn't get it. 
if I had three people going for that interview, nine times out of 10, one of them would get it. And then I wouldn't be focusing on the one people that didn't get it. I'm just, hooray about that person that did get it. So that's when we say it's a numbers game. It, it 100% is. You could ask, like we said, 10 people and one person says yes. You could have five people join and one person skyrockets, but it's that one person yeah. that is then you that energy that you've spent is what worth all that time worth all that time. it's a bit of a this is like i will include the income disclosure statement right but i worked out last month so this is just based on my own frontline so only people that i've sponsored no one else within my team and this is just my frontline that are certified or essential which means they're put in maybe orders that were 100 prv and maybe orders that were 200 prv that are active and just off of those alone I earned £680 just off of my hobbyists last month. So when you look at it like that, that's before I that's before I put in my 2,500 PRV that I did. That's before I earned any money from my director teams or anywhere else. Just my certified and hobbyists that and my essential consultants, my brand new team is, I earned £680 off. And when you think that's that's an income, like... That, that would have been enough to keep me off work monthly to pay for my bills and what I needed to put in my household bills. That's enough. So when you say, like when people are saying, oh, I've only got a team of hobbyists, they don't do anything. They're only putting in little orders. Actually appreciate every single one of them because when you get to levels when you're lead or you're, say for example, it takes you 10 teamies and finally you hit lead. But when you do, they're all your frontline. You will start to earn that sort of money on them. So we're not going to get too into money that we've got, I've got, there's a leadership training tomorrow night that's all on money. And if you want to hear that, it's in the level up program. So if you're in there, you'll hear it. If not, it will go on YouTube at some point. But I just, I, I think I see quite a lot. Oh, I've only got a team of hobbyists. So I haven't got no rock stars. I just want some rock stars. And I think to myself, you need to be grateful for every single person that's in your team. I know I certainly am. Whether they put in one PRV or whether they put in 5,000 PRV, they all get the same treatment from me. Every single person. So I just trying to Sarah's question. I have zero wish. No, where was it? What do you say when people? Um, I say I don't get anything. It makes it means absolutely not. It, I don't earn anything just for you joining. Um, you cannot have success in this business without helping other people to have success. So it, the only difference with it, without what we do to a traditional company is if this was let's just say to me, Camera Group, where Dan used to work. Okay, I can guarantee the people at the bottom of that company were making the top people at the top of the money, the top of the company, a hell of a lot of money. But the difference is this person probably didn't really have the opportunity to overtake that person. Everybody is starting their own business, and and everybody wins basically. So it's not just not about earning money off other people. I I also with that, I always say like it's it's not to do with like I, all you're getting is a bonus. And I always say this to people, I say I just get a bonus because I actually help them. Yeah. I help them to hit a promotion. So therefore I get a bonus. Yes, it's based on what they do, but I help them. That's why I help people. That's why I message people. That's why I do lives. That's why I do trainings. That's why that's why we do this at the end of the day, not just to to obviously, you know, we to make more money ourselves, but to help right. you guys make money and then we get a bonus based on that you get a bonus on your team that's done that and that's how you've got to look at it and I think when people ask I always say we don't get any of their money and it's really important that you know that when you're sponsoring someone and they say well what do you get from me you say actually I don't get anything from you what you make is yours what you make is your own money all I get is a bonus for actually helping you yeah and that bonus is it's very nice (laughs) <laughs> it's very nice but no seriously like that that's a really like I think it's a really good question actually and in, mm-hmm. in sponsoring training I think that's a really good question to come up because I, I have been asked that a few times and as, as I said at, at the beginning I had a guy uh, today asked Lace me Butler has just got a oh team. my god that's amazing <laughs> go Lise um I had a guy this week literally asked me outright how much do you earn how much can I earn and I was like, oh, so, you know, you will get people that just want to know that. That's sometimes a good sponsor. If you know someone's driven by money as well, if you show them what mm. you're there, that's how I sponsor. And that's the thing, I suppose, that's like what I said at the beginning, is getting to know your customers. If you're approaching someone about an opportunity, you need to know what drives them, them and what they're, because if it's because, it, you know, it's a busy mum that's struggling for money, but wants something for herself then you're sharing the opportunity one way. If it's like Lisa said, someone that is so driven by money, then fantastic. Well, look, do you want to see what I earn for the hours that I'm working at? Like, 
tailor it to the person that you're talking to dependent on their wants and their needs because again it's about them and it's not about you don't just send the same message to every single person you're approaching tailor it dependent on what that person wants from this experience it's fully okay to say you're driven by money it's it's fine i am nothing wrong it doesn't make you ungrateful for what you have because we all know you know by the law of um gratitude you cannot have more unless you're grateful for what you have but it's fully okay to say i want nice things in life i want you know financial freedom i want to be able to pay off my debt i want to be able to go on holiday whenever i want i want to be able to buy my cat like i want to build an extension <laughs> I, want to, yeah. I, want to extension. I want to buy a caravan Woo-hoo! like it's actually there's nothing wrong with saying i want to earn more money in life like money doesn't bring you happiness but it brings you freedom and it brings you choices yeah. and it's actually Choice. fully okay to say that Oh, have I just clicked on, I've just clicked on that quote and I've ended up, I don't know where, where we've all gone. Are you all sort of in my... I can, we can still see you. All right, so it's just me. That's fine. So, <laughs> the other things, guys, when you are talking about money, really, 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 really important, you've got to include the income disclosure form. Whatever you're talking about anything, whether it's the fact that you've bought some sweets because of Sensi, whether you've, I don't know, put petrol in your car because of Sensi, you must include the income disclosure statement. So go and make sure. I tell you, I save mine. It's in my notes of my phone. I know, Laura, I think you both, both do the same, girls, don't you? Yeah. And that way, every time you write it, anything to do with any form of spending that you're grateful for, stick the income disclosure statement. Don't put it anywhere if you're talking about money, holidays, trips, anything that you're... <laughs> I'm oh, sorry, I'm still trying and to... I've just seen that Natalie, what Natalie's just written, that's literally one of the best things I've ever read. <laughs> it's brilliant. I can't even see... Do you know, I don't know what... It says, I says money doesn't buy you happiness, oh, but yeah. it's more comfortable to cry in a Mercedes than on a bicycle. <laughs> I love that. That's brilliant. We should get all these quotes made into something. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what about talking about freebies, half prices? Yeah, include the income disclosure statement. You can't go wrong. If you put it everywhere... You yeah. can never get pulled up for not including it. I got I got compliance email last month, month before, because I didn't include it. So like even us SSDs get pulled up by compliance. Oh, so okay. if you're not sure, just include it. Yeah, just include it. Compliance email about advertising Disney wrong. Still, like honestly, I just I don't know. It happens. Just... It happens. Don't yeah. worry about it. Right. So we've got a bit of homework for you. Here's your homework. We feel like we've, we've been chatting. I've got really hot where we've been talking as well. My I know. I'm really hot like, as well. I'm rosy. Um, okay. So this week, I'm actually, I keep reading the wrong week. Um, we want, hopefully you've taken one thing at least from tonight. Hopefully you've taken more than one. I really hope you can. Um, your challenge tonight is to go for 10 no's this week. Now, if you've already gone for your 10 no's and you've already got them, your challenge is to do it again. So start from scratch, start from today, 10 no's from today, go out there and go and find it. Um, I don't know who iPhone is, but if you search the workstation, income disclosure, there's like a little um, magnifying glass, search it and put in there income disclosure, it'll come up, you can download it, save it to your phone. And if if you get a really big um, link, because it does come up really big, there's a website called tinyurl.com. You go on there, it's free. You can put the website into there and it literally shrinks it into like four words so it doesn't look quite so chunky on your post, especially if you're posting on Instagram. Um, second thing, if you've never made a join pack, we want you to go and make a join pack and go and advertise it. Go and make five and advertise them. Get rid of them. I will share in the group my Google Drive. You can take what you like from it. You don't need to ask. Take it, save it, add it to your own, um, make them personal or make your own if you're a whiz with Pink Monkey. Um, or if you've already got a join pack, then get them out there or even revamp it, revisit it, revamp it. Um, your challenge is really is to get your sponsor on this week. More than anything, we want and we want to hear the success stories. Every time you sponsor someone, you come into our group, find the thread and you shout yourself out so that we can all cheerlead you. We can all give you like a whoop whoop and all the rest of it. Lastly, last little thing, which is really, really important next week is graduation week and we're going to try and plan something a little bit special for you all um same time same place um actually it'll be on tuesday next week though yeah um but for that to happen we need you to comment on i think i'll do a google form we will need you to fill in a google form it literally is a link you click on it and you will need to fill it in to say that you've completed the full six weeks okay if you've missed out on any weeks, you need to go back and catch them up. You'd only be cheating yourself, but hopefully you've all, we're just going to be taking your word for it. 
Um, and then everybody that has completed the six weeks, um, then we will be doing something special next week. So we re- more than anything, I, I just, I know we will talk about this next week, but I just want to say from my own personal is thank you for every single one of you that has turned up every single bloody week and this rush you have it on for like hours and hours and hours um and like i want to say that you guys have inspired me to do like i'm pushing to levels that i have never pushed to like to get 1300 prv already this month it has been a push for me but i'm doing that because we are i'm putting into practice everything that we're talking about to show you guys that we're putting it all into practice as well. So you are making us up our game more than more than you realise as well. So anyway, right, I'm going to, if anyone wants to add anything, feel free. But um, yeah. No, no, it was just exactly the same as that. Like this has been, it, it has exactly the same effect on us. It makes us go away with like fire in our belly and go, right, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. I'm going to implement that because, you know, everybody can get complacent, not complacent, that's the wrong word, but it's always good to have a reminder, always be learning. It doesn't matter how long you've been in and it's always good to have that refresher. So yeah, hundred percent. Just thank you. Because, you know, if we weren't getting your feedback, that wouldn't then feed back into us. Yeah. Amazing. Well, obviously there was something else I just wanted to say quickly, but I can't remember what I, it's gone. My brain's like, Right, well, I'll put the Google form out. I'm sure there's going to be something. It will come, and if not, we'll just add it on to next week. But go get totally, your... Um, it's totally my birthday on Monday, so I'll make sure I don't have too many Proseccos <laughs> on Monday night. <laughs> Lucky we're not training on Tuesday, because I'll be like, oh, I don't know what to say. Tuesday night, yeah. Tuesday night. Yeah. Tuesday night, so yeah, it's all right. My birthday's okay. Monday. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. Honestly, loved all this. It's been brilliant. So, um, right, we will put some threads up. We'd love you to join in with whatever we ask over the next few days to help us for next week and I hope you've all had a good one and oh just so that was what I was going to say these will be uploaded eventually onto YouTube so you will have these to go back to with your team at any point you'll be able to share them from any of our YouTube platforms so and then what we will try and do the aim of this is to run this every year yeah every year every Amen. January we will be here two hours <laughs> yeah. One hour. Let's, let's just say two hours. Never let let's never say an hour. It's never gonna happen. <laughs> All right, guys. Anyway, right, I'm gonna go now. I'm gonna stop talking. Right, right speak to you soon, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.